Welcome to the latest episode of the Three Piece Combo MMA Show brought to you by the Five Reasons Sports Network. Today we're going to be covering UFC Vegas 10, Angela Hill versus Michelle Watterson. So let's get right into it. So tonight we have Angela Hill taking on karate hottie Michelle Watterson in the main event of UFC Vegas 10. We're going to start off by taking a look at all of our picks and then we're going to go ahead and break down the fights individually from there. Getting started with the main event. We are going to take Angela Hill over Michelle Watterson. For the co-main event, we're going to take Atman Azatar, defeating Kama Worthy. Third fight of the night, we are going to take Andrea Lee over at Roxanne Mataferi. Following that, we're taking Mike Roger guys over at Herman. For the fifth fight on the card, we are going to take Bobby Green over Alan Patrick. And for the first fight, we're going to take Willie Quarantillo over Kyle Nelson. Moving on to the prelims for the night, we're going to take on Julia Villa over Sahara Eubanks. Next up, we are going to take Roosevelt Roberts over Kevin Kroom. Alexander Romanov is going to come out and make his debut, and I think he's going to go ahead and take that win over Rocky Martinez. We're going to go ahead and take Roosevelt Roberts' teammate, Jalen Turner, over Brock Weaver. Next on the card, we have Brian Barbarena taking over the win and over Anthony Ivey. And for the opening fight in the card... We're going to take Sabina Mazo in the win over Justine Kish. So let's dig a little bit more into this main event matchup. We have Michelle the Karate Hottie Watterson taking on Angela over Kill Hill. Now, they're both 5'3". Angela Hill does have a 2.5 inch reach and a 3 inch leg reach advantage over uh, Watterson. And as far as their record goes, Angela Hill is 12-8 and, and Watterson is 17-8. and eight. So Watterson does have a little bit more... Uh, experience in the UFC as far or experience overall but all of those fights for or almost all of those fights for Angela Hill have been in the UFC so her UFC experience does overshadow Watterson's now getting into the way they win for Hill she has five wins by knockout seven by decision and then for Watterson she actually has nine by submission so she might have an advantage on the ground when it comes to this fight against Hill but luckily good for Hill she does have good takedown defense she averages about 72 percent on her takes down defended um, so she should have a good chance at being able to keep this a standing fight now we're taking Angela Hill in the win over Watterson breaking down Angela's fight a little bit more uh, she likes to jab off the back foot and use that one two she uses that a lot and she's a North American Muay Thai champion so she's really good in the clinch she's really good to get good knees good elbows and she's good when she wants to take the dominating position on the or on the can on the cage she's able to get those underhooks when she wants to and she is also able to grapple her head and go ahead for those Muay Thai strikes now getting into Waterson a little more she does like to switch stances off switch stances often she does use that kick like a jab it doesn't really have much of a tell so that's something that's really good if Angela tries to close the distance Watterson can use that to advantage and try to bring those kicks up as well she does have main event experience she did take on Joanna in a main event for the number one contender spot for facing Wei Li Zhang now she did lose that fight but she put on a pretty good performance so look for her to go still go ahead and put on a good performance tonight with that being said, we're still going to go ahead and take Angela Hill over this in the win over this fight uh, just because we feel like she has a cl advantage in the clinch. Uh, she's going to be able to close the distance and take advantage of those Muay Thai skills. Watterson does have a weakness in the clinch. She shows that he's, she is a little bit weaker when it comes to the clinch. So we expect Angela to use that, use her crisper boxing, and go ahead and take the win. In the co-main event of the evening, we see Atman Azatar taking on Kama de Death Star Worthy. Now, for this fight, we are going to take Otman. Uh, we see that he has experience fighting the guys with the reach advantage. He does have a win over multiple people with a reach advantage over him. He likes to throw that big overhand power right. Um, and he sets up the, the head with good shots to the body. So he really targets the body first. Then from there, he moves on to the head. Now for Worthy, he does, does have a good chance to win this fight. Um, he's coming in. He uses his feints really well. Uh, he does give up the calf kick, so if Otman is able to expose that, he would be able to have another advantage of him. Um, but he came in before in a fight previously as a 650 underdog, and he did come out and win this fight. So Worthy's getting some respect at win the Othmakers right now. He is the favorite to win this fight, but we're going to go ahead and take Azatar coming in uh, just because we feel like we have the he has the power advantage in this fight. Moving on to the next fight on the card, we see Roxanne, the happy warrior, Mataferi 
take on Andrea KGB Lee. Now we're taking Andrea Lee in this fight to take the win. She does have the advantage in all the grappling and all the striking statistics. She comes in at five foot six with a 69 and a half inch reach compared to the little bit taller five foot seven, but she does have a little bit shorter reach uh, at 69 inches for Roxanne Modafferi. Now we see with Modafferi, she does use the one two quite often. Uh, she does have the ability to take the, get the takedown and she uh, has the ability to counter takedowns and end, in, un, end up in a good mount position. Um, we see that when she fought Jennifer Maya, she had a good mount well. Um, but she does get reckless at times and she does get bullied by the fence. So we see for Andrea Lee, the reason we're going to take her in this fight, she's a really good counter puncher. She throws those low kicks and she throws really good diverse combinations. Um, and she does show a little bit of weakness against the Muay Thai, but we, we shouldn't see too much Muay Thai coming out from Mata Ferry. Uh, we might want to see her keep the distance a little bit more. Um, but we're going to go ahead and take Andrea Lee in this fight. Moving on to the next fight of the night, we see Edge Short Fuse Herman take on Mike Slow Rodriguez. Now, Rodriguez is coming in on nine days notice, so he might have had a little bit of a shorter camp to prepare for this fight. Now, for Herman, he does come in with all the advantage in the grappling stats. If you look at the statistics for his grappling, he averages about two and a half takedowns every 15 minutes. He has about a 50% accuracy when it comes down to takedowns, um, and he does defend the takedowns a little bit more. But what we'll see from Rodriguez, we probably won't see many takedowns from him. He doesn't average any takedowns per match, uh, so his takedown accuracy is zero, and his takedown percentage defense defended is only 38%. So if Herman goes for about three shots, he might get one or two of them just at least. Now looking at the strikes, Rodriguez has the strikes strike advantage in almost all the departments. He has a 4.59 landed per minute strike differential against 3.33 for Herman. Um, and he does hand a, land a little bit higher clip at 54% compared to the uh, 44% by, by Herman. Now, we are going to take Rodriguez in this fight. He does have that one-punch power. He's able to get shots off while he's in the guards, and he has good uses good usage of his leg kicks into his combos um he does throw good leg kicks as well as he does have the power to finish the fight in one punch now the reason we would want to take herman in this fight uh he just is a little bit older at 39 years old he doesn't keep his hands high all the time uh, we see his hands tend to drop a little bit more especially when it gets later into the fights his hand tends to drop he tends to throw lazy punches and leave himself prone to shots now you wouldn't mind doing that against somebody who doesn't have the knockout power that Mike Rodriguez does. But when it's somebody against who does have that power, you're not going to have a very long night if you keep your chin exposed uh, like Ed Herman tends to do. So we're going to take Mike Rodriguez in this fight. The next fight of the night we have is Bobby King Green taking on Alan Naget Patrick. Now Bobby Green, he's coming in with a 26 and 10 and 1 record. And for Patrick, he's coming in with 15 and 2. Now for Patrick, he does have a really good record, but he only averages about one fight a year. So he hasn't been putting on a lot of action to make himself a well-known contender, but he is does have a good record here at 15 and two. Now for the way of the, the wins come by, for Green, he has eight wins by knockout or TKO, nine wins by submission, and nine, nine wins by decision. So he's coming in very well-rounded, able to doing it on the stand-up, able to do it on the submission or on the ground, and able to outpoint and outstrike his, fight, the, his opponents. Now for Patrick, he's coming in with four wins by knockout, two by submission, and nine by decision. So he's really decision heavy. And what we can see is Green might be going for the finish or attacking, being a little more of the aggressive fighters and trying to get this fight, keep it on the stand up. Now you see a heavy strike advantage uh, when it comes to the strikes for Bobby Green. He averages five a minute compared to the 1.8 or two of Patrick. And he lands at a much higher clip at about a 50% clip and defends at about a 63% rate. Now where the advantage comes is Patrick. He averages about four or four takedown averages every 15 minutes. Um, he averages about 40% of them that will actually happen. And look, good thing for Bobby Green, he has 73% on his takedown accuracy. So he does have a pretty good takedown defense coming down to the fights. The key for the win for Bobby Green is he's going to want to make sure he keeps this a standing fight. We are taking him in this fight just because we've seen a little bit of a late evolution in his fighting style. He seems to have sharpened up all of his as his well-roundedness in his game. And we will see him go ahead and take that win over Patrick. For the opening fight of the main card, 
We see Billy Q, Billy Corey Tiro taking on Kyle Nelson in the featherweight division. Now, we see Billy's coming in on a seven fight winning streak. And six of last, the last six of Nelson's fights have all been finishes, whether he has been finished or he has finished somebody else. And Nelson is coming in 10 and 1 at 145 pounds. Now, we like Billy Q in this fight. We see that he's active in the submission attempts. He started off on Dana White's contender series. And every time he works, he doesn't just work the head. He works the body. He works the head. He works the legs. And he does a good job at really mixing up where the shots are coming from so his opponent isn't able to read where they're coming from. So for Nelson, the reason we don't want to see, or we won't see him win in this fight, uh, is because he tends to gas out. He does throw really heavy shots, but I feel like if he just ha if he's on the ground, he doesn't have quite the advantage as Billy G does. That's why we're gonna go ahead and take Billy G in this win. For the featured prelim bout, we have Julia Avila taking on Sahara Eubanks. Now, right now, we see that Avila comes is coming in on a four-fight winning streak with a record of eight and one. And for Eubank, she comes in with a record of 5-4. and four. So she doesn't have the greatest record, uh, especially here in the UFC. She's 2-2. Two and two. Uh, She does have a slight height disadvantage against Julia. She's coming in at 5'4", compared to Julia's 5'7". And Sarge is coming in with a slight reach disadvantage at 67 inches, compared to Julia Vila's 68 reach advantage. Now, uh, four of her wins for Julia Vila have been by TKO. And she has one submission and three losses and three decisions. And for Eubanks, she has two KOs and three decision wins. So she's coming in uh, with a, a good stand-up game or getting the decision win. Now, the reason we're taking Julia Vila is she's because she has this, the much better uh, experience when it comes to the UFC. She's 2-0 in the UFC right now. Uh, and she does have an advantage when it comes to her accuracy and how many strikes she absorbs per minute. So just, she does do a good job of making sure that she doesn't get hit. And we feel like Avila is going to be able to outstrike her and land the tighter shots and get this win. The next fight we see on the card is Roosevelt the Predator Roberts taking on Kevin the hard-hitting hillbilly Kroom. Now Kroom is coming in making his UFC debut on one day's notice. And Roberts is coming in. Uh, this is a th his third fight since the lockdown has happened. Now, Roberts comes in with a thick 6'2 height advantage over the 5'11 Kevin Kroom, and he does a have a 5-inch leg reach advantage at 41 inches compared to the 36 of, of Kevin. Now, right now, Roberts is 10 and 2 compared to 21 and 12 of Kroom. Uh, three of those wins have been by knockout, five by submissions, two by decisions. Um, and with Kroom, he does have a good strong background in the submission game where 10 of his wins, almost half of his wins, have come by submission. Now, looking at the significant strikes, you see that Roberts averages about three strikes per minute uh, at about a 50% clip. So we might see him really go ahead and use his distance to keep his opponent at bay. He has good takedowns, but he's not super proficient at passing. He does have special. He does specialize slightly in jujitsu, um, but we should see him use this. You try to use his length to really take this win tonight, and that's why we think Roosevelt is going to take the win tonight. The next fight is one I've actually been looking forward to. Uh, because Alexander King Kong Romanov has been trying to make his UFC debut for about five months now, but his fights have always been ending up getting canceled, including last week's. Um, but fortunately for him, he does have somebody stepping up this week. Uh, Rock Martin is making his UFC debut as well. Um, so they, both fighters are making the UFC debut. And Romanov is coming in right now at 11 or no. Now, he doesn't have the heftiest of the fight schedule as far as the people he's fought. So the record does feel a little bit... Um, like he doesn't have the competition in that record, um, but he does still show that he has a good wrestling background. Um, he does have the ability to close his distance and then take the opponent to the ground, which is kind of what he's been specialized at doing. He's coming in with seven submissions and four TKOs, so he's finished all of his fights. Now for Martinez, he's coming in um, with a record of 16-6 and six and two uh, no contest, but we see that... Um, he doesn't have quite the ability as far as the takedown defense. Um, we might see Romanov really just take Martinez down, dominate him on the ground. Right now he's 11-0. This will be his first big win over a little bit heightened competition, and we will see Romanov go ahead and take this win. For the next fight of the card, we see Jalen the Tarantula Turner taking on Brock Chakatuska Weaver. Now, Turner is taking on this fight on five days' notice. 
um, and he does have all the advantage in the grappling stats. So for Brock, what he would want to do is take the game and try to make it a stand-up fight. Unfortunately for him, Turner has a six foot three height advantage compared to the six foot uh, Brock. So he has a three inch height advantage, not six foot three. That'd be a really bad height advantage. Uh, but he has a three inch height advantage and a four inch reach advantage and a five inch leg reach advantage. So he's longer all the way around. And on top of that, he does have all the advantage in the grappling stats. Um, and he does average a little bit more uh, output when it comes to the strikes. He averages at about six compared to the four and a half for Weaver. And he defends about half of them compared to 36% by Weaver. So we're going to take Turner taking this fight. We believe he's going to use his boxing uh, to, to lighten him up. And we'll go ahead and see him use that length and take that win. For the next fight of the night, we have Brian Bam Bam Barbarena taking on Anthony Aquaman Ivy. Now, Barbara Barbarena is actually coming off of a 14-month layoff. He has been out due to surgery. So this is going to be a really big fight just to see kind of how he comes back uh, really recovering from that. Now, Barbarena has had some really good competition, um, such as Vicente Luque, uh, among a couple of others. He's coming in right now with a 14-7 and record compared to Ivy's 8-3. and uh, We're going to go ahead and take Barbarena in this fight. Just because he has more competition against the top guys. Um, he's a brawler, so he's going to really want to make this fight something uh, like a dirty fight. Where he's in the face, doing dirty boxing, getting up close. He has 10 wins by knockout. Um, so it would be in his wheelhouse to try, ahead and, try and, and knock out Ivy. Now for Ivy, he does have a good defense when it comes to the stand-up um, at 56%. But he absorbs about 10 strikes per minute. At his current rate um, so for him he's gonna want to make sure he doesn't get hit 10 times in the face by Barbarena per minute because he'll probably end up getting knocked out uh, and because we see that disparity in the strikes for Barbarena we're gonna go ahead and take him for winning this fight moving on to the opening fight of this evening we have the Colombian Queen Sabina Mazo taking on Justine Kish now neither fighter are both coming in has never been finished um, and 14 of their 18 combined fights have gone to decision. So we probably will see a decision coming in tonight for this opening bout of the evening. Now Mazo comes in with a 6 inch reach advantage. Um, she has a 70 inch reach advantage compared to the six or 64 inch reach of Justine Kish. And she's coming in as a 2 inches taller fighter at 5 foot 7 compared to the 5 foot 5 of Kish. Now for Mazo, she's coming in averaging about 6.5 strikes landed per minute compared to the 4 and a quarter for Kish. Uh, she does have a little bit lower accuracy at 45%, but it's not that much with Kish's 49%. Uh, and she does defend at a higher clip. Right now, she averages at about a, a plus three strike differential per minute. So we will we should see Mazo be the more aggressive of the fighter and take the fight to Kish. Now going to the grappling, we do see that, that Mazo does have a decent clip when it comes to there as well. She averages about one and a third when it comes to the grappling. Um, with 100% takedown accuracy so far in her UFC bouts, um, and 88% of them, 88 of her defenses for her takedowns have been have been successful, compared to the 35% accuracy of Kish, and 55% accuracy of of Kish as well. Now, because we see all the advantages on the strikes um, and the grappling, and that we will see Sabrina Maza use that Muay Thai clinch against a shorter fighter, and usually when you have the, the clinch against a shorter fighter, it's easy to get those elbows, it's easier to get those knees, so that's why we're going to go ahead and take Sabrina Mazo, uh, taking the win in the opening fight against Kish. Thanks for checking out the latest episode of the Three Piece Combo MMA Show, brought to you by the Five Reasons Sports Network, and until we see you again in the post show, have a good one.